It's like I was a hostage. And to the outside world, it probably looked quite normal. When I left at the end, I was like an invisible person. that abuser or even past abusers suddenly got in touch and was trying to get in with them and trying to isolate with them. I dread to think what would have happened if I caved in and allowed him to be living with us during lockdown. Lynn remembers being called for this photo when she was in the back garden playing. She was happy in her own world but she can hardly remember that girl because for the years that followed when she left her grandparents to live with her mum and dad, she saw things no one, let alone a child, should ever see. A life of sadness and fear as her dad repeatedly abused her mum. Mum was very heavily pregnant and dad was kicking her. He was kicking her in the stomach and he was punching her, punching her face. And my grandmother turned up and um, she came in at the right time. She wouldn't do anything to get beaten up, but yet he would shout at her and say, you did this to make me do this. But it only got worse. As she got older, her dad turned on her. That was a step too far for her mum, who knew then she had to leave. Despite being ordered to stay away from the family by the courts, he came back to the house. Lynn was there when he killed her mum. I was sent to bed, it was a late, late in the evening, um, which unusually I went to my bed because I thought he was going to start again. And um, he quietened down, he went into the living room and then he started accusing her. And then she got up to phone the police and I heard a scream from mum that was like none other scream I'd ever heard. And um, he had a, a knife in his pocket and he uh, stabbed her um, six times, I think, in the back. And she died on the way to hospital. This one's particularly up upsetting yeah, for you. Yeah. This picture was taken of Lynn and her sister just months after their mum died. I wanted to remember how we felt at the time because it's so different now. And Lynn has been determined to use those harrowing experiences from her childhood to support others. She created a social enterprise called No Fear, which helps men and women affected by domestic abuse. Lynn invited me to two of their meetings back in March. The locations are kept private to protect those who come here. Because you can become very high. Many of their abusers won't know they're seeking help. I saw for myself how vital these groups are. At each session, they work through the Freedom Programme. It's an educational course which teaches survivors how to make sense of and understand what has happened to them. But just two weeks after we filmed. It is vitally important. You must stay at home. Today was the first day of Scotland being in lockdown. They could no longer meet. For some, their only safe space suddenly ripped away from them. They used their body to intimidate. But Lynn and her team managed to quickly adapt. Within days, they started doing the groups online. I could just say to the kids, don't listen to her, your mother's stupid. For Anne, whose real identity we've protected, being able to access that support through lockdown was so important. She was in an abusive relationship for 30 years. For me, there was some horrific sexual abuse that I still find difficult to even see as abuse. If someone else told me, I would think this is just unbelievable abuse. And yet, because it happened to me, it's just minimised. It's so normal that you accept it and move on. You don't like it, you hate it, it's painful, it's horrific at times, but it's just something that you have to survive. But the new way of life, which took us all a long time to get used to, was familiar to Anne. Mm -hmm. I think one of the weird things about lockdown was it made me realise how much lockdown was like my life before. Bizarrely familiar and it really made me think how awful it would be to be in lockdown with my ex. And I realise now how much I organised my days so that I had a task to leave the house every day. One of the things that really struck me is how much control I thought I had over my life and how much control I didn't have over my life. Uh, and lockdown just really exposed that, that makes me think, well, 
this illusion that I had been under that everything was fine. Being able to access the sessions has been a lifeline for Jane during lockdown. We've also changed her name to protect her identity. I'm not sure how I would have managed lockdown without that support. That support was there online at a really crucial time for me. There was more pressure from my husband and just trying to convince me that I wouldn't manage lockdown without him. That support was vital. Although he was maybe presenting in a certain way and seemed to be very charming and lovely and everything, it was all using the circumstances, the situation of lockdown, to try and get back in. Well, that's this morning's session just coming to an end. So much has obviously changed from when I was here back in March, but what hasn't changed is Lynn and the team's devotion to these survivors. Even putting the groups online, they've still managed to create a space where they feel comfortable to open up about their experiences, some of them for the first time ever. That's one of the things the Freedom Programme has done. It's made me realise how abnormal things were, how disordered life was. I'm starting to see how much I've done and how much I have accomplished. And I've now got a future that I never had.